Hey everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be sharing with you all the books I read in August. In August I participated in Tome Topple and also a few book clubs and I think I overstretched myself with how many book clubs I chose, how many readathons I picked. So I did end up reading a lot of books in August but I never fully completed a readathon which is fine because as long as I read books that are on my TBR I'm happy. <laughs> So let's just jump into what I read. So the first book I finished in August was A Song of Wraiths and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. Oh my god, I absolutely adored this book. I started reading it at the end of July and I just knew it was going to be an instant favourite. And it's actually the first book I've ever tabbed. As you can see, there are a lot of tabs in there. This book has been talked about a lot around booktube, book twitter, instagram. It is about Malik who has to kill the princess to save his sister and also the princess Karina who has to kill a king to save her mother and it just goes from there it's so magical the magic system is really unique I love the setting I love I loved how the characters felt so real Malik has been one of my favorite main characters in forever he, he wasn't the traditional male love interest where he was all brash and grumpy he was very soft so if you like a soft boy definitely read this he didn't shy away from his emotions I loved his relationship with his sisters and I loved how his relationship developed with Karina and then Karina she was so zesty and strong I love how driven she was and how she knew her own mind and this book is such a fun ride it includes like a trial a competition type of thing so if you're interested in fantasy enemies to lovers and different types of magic definitely pick this up this was a five star book I loved it it's hard to <laughs> explain why I loved it because when you love a book you're just like I love it that's it read it <laughs> So definitely read this. The next book I picked up was also a five star read and that was The Extraordinaries by TJ Klune. I have been waiting for TJ Klune to release a YA of a novel and this did not disappoint. It had TJ Klune's signature humour and style. So if you're familiar with his other books, you will love this, I think. It is about Nick, who is obsessed with the superheroes in his town, and he writes fan fiction about one of them and is totally, like, in love with him. <laughs> it's really funny. And this book kicks off when he actually meets the superhero that he's, like, obsessed with, Shadowstar. And so I definitely recommend this book if you're looking for a kind of a sci-fi contemporary novel. It's, I would say sci-fi because of the superhero element, but I don't know if superheroes is its own genre. <laughs> but it's such a fun book. It's a really quick read. I just love Nick as a character. He's so like, <laughs> I don't want to say dumb, but he's kind of very oblivious to like his surroundings and uh, the people who truly love him. So it's such a good exploration of meeting your hero and the expectations of that and also uh, having this idea of someone in your head and how they truly are. And I really love that about this book. It's like I said, it's such a fun book. I definitely recommend this book if you want to read a gay superhero novel, which is really fun and really sweet. The next book I read was Snot Girl Volume 3 by Brian Lee O'Malley and Leslie Hung. This is, like I said, Volume 3. I've been reading Snot Girl now for a couple of a couple of years and I really enjoy it I love like the mystery I love how because this is the third volume I don't want to spoil too much but there's such a it's such a theme of unlikable characters in this and I really like how that's explored but unfortunately this one didn't give me anything new like we're volume three now and I just feel like it's the same kind of story like we're not moving anywhere I think I definitely want to see where volume four goes and see if things progress in the plot wise or even character wise because like because the characters and the plot have kind of stagnated now i still gave this three stars because i love um the style it's beautiful and i love i still really like lottie as a character because we don't get many like unlikable characters to read from so it's quite interesting but I definitely will continue on with this graphic novel and next i read probably the sweetest most heartwarming novel of 2020 and that is House of Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. Oh my god this was 100% a five-star book. This is the gooeyest most heartwarming book you will read. TJ Klune himself has said he 
it can be read by like any age and I completely agree with that. I want to give this book to my mom, to my niece, like to anyone I know who wants just like a feel good found family book. This book is by is about Linus Baker who is a social worker for magical children and he goes around to the orphanages to make sure that they're <laughs> to make sure the kids are well looked after and having their needs met and then he's doing such a good job that his bosses tell him to go to go to an island to check on these six very dangerous children and we go on from there i just love how linus is like honestly he's like a boring character but he's not he's just like an everyday normal person just living in this kind of magical world but also a world rooted in our reality which i find so interesting and so you can really see like yourself in linus because he's just so normal but like it's sweet in a way and then when we meet the kids I oh, it's so cute and I just love this book so much I definitely recommend this book to anyone who wants to just read a book that is heartfelt warm I was definitely excited to read this book and I actually picked this up this month because Mina Rees read it and she said that she cried over a button <laughs> and I was like oh I need to read it now and yes you will cry over a button 100% so I definitely recommend this book new favorite of mine like all-time favorite I want to read it like right now and I only read it two weeks ago I'm really hoping to get my mom to read it soon because it's just that sweet so 100% a 5, 10 star book. Next I read Fence Volume 4 and this is interesting because it's the first time they released just a full volume instead of just like issues. It picked up straight where Fence Volume 3 left off so if you, if you don't know about Fence it's, it's about Nicholas who enters a private school for fencing and it just goes from there. It's just about the fencing team, their relationships, their friendships and rivalry with Seji and I really like, I really enjoy this. This is such a quick, easy read, but I still have, I have a similar problem with this book as I have with Snot Girl Volume 3. It just kind of feels like the plot and the characters are kind of going nowhere because we're stuck in a very short timeline so nothing's really happened i still really enjoyed it but i just want like more to happen now because we're up to volume four i want to see what happens but i'm really interested to see what the novel is going to be like based on this uh graphic novel series because i think that will change my opinion if i'm going to continue this series or not so i give this a three star and i recommend it if you want a really a really quick easy ya graphic novel next i read get a life chloe brown by talia hibbert i really enjoyed this it was so sweet chloe is such an amazing firecracker character she really knows her own mind and this book has a great representation as chloe is black and also has chronic pain and she lives with that and then we also had redford who has anxiety and kind i think i think they say ptsd i'm not too sure he has to work through some past relationship issues chloe and red's relationship is so fun like they instantly kind of hate each other but really they, they're both really attracted to each other and i really enjoy how we get both perspectives from both chloe and red so we can really see how they feel and how they react to each other i've already like pre-ordered take a hint danny brown unfortunately it hasn't come yet but i really want to read that soon and i just saw the cover announcement for grow up i think eva brown i'm not too sure but i'm really excited to read the rest of the series it's such a really good romance and so i gave chloe brown a four stars this month was honestly filled with so many five star reads like I don't know how I got so lucky to pick up such amazing book. I found some like all town new favourites this month and one of them is The Poppy War by RF Kuang. Hi cutie, we got a little visitor. This is Kitty. Yes, she's a cat named Kitty. Hello. Hi. Say hello Kitty. Oh my god, I have heard so many things about this book. How many trigger warnings, how amazing it is, how brutal it is. Like I just so many people have talked about this book and I was already I was always a bit hesitant to read it because of the trigger warnings. I was like, okay, I'm gonna read it because it just I don't want to miss out on <laughs> this amazing story. And I'm so glad I picked this up. It definitely at times was hard to read and but like what didn't like glorify anything and it also didn't gloss over anything which i really liked so this is about rin who gets accepted into a really prestigious academy but rin is actually a war orphan from the previous poppy war and so the society kind of looks down on her for that because she doesn't have any family standing and so when she gets into this academy she faces a lot of 
prejudice also because she's a dark skinned peasant girl where where lighter skinned people in this world are more held to a higher standards and are considered more above class Rin does not let this slow her down she really has this sort of like low burning vengeance in like a way that she, it just simmers like throughout the story and you just like know it's gonna come out at some point and I just really love her as a character because she's kind of I would describe her as very she thinks about things a lot but at the same time she's like I don't care about the consequences I want this to happen and she gets her way <laughs> and I just love this it follows Rin from I think believe when she's 16 upwards I think around 20 like it's not I don't know the specific age we followed her through but should we follow her through from when she's at her village to the academy and then to the next war and definitely I would definitely suggest uh, looking up the trigger warnings for this book everyone has them I don't want to miss any but I'll leave a link down below to the trigger warning database for this book because yeah what people say about this book is so true like you really have to go in knowing that you're going to read some brutal things but like I said before RF Kuang she writes in a way where you really know that she knows the history behind this because Poppy War is based on real history and real things that happened and when I found out that like one of the most worst chapters in this book was based on a real event I was like Oh, I was shocked because I didn't know this history. I'm really excited to pick up The Dragon Republic next. But yeah, in saying that, this book is a brutal masterpiece. That's the only way I can explain it. You really, like, it's thick, but you just can't put it down because you have to know what happens. You have to see like, how, how they're going to get out of it, you know? So yeah, five star, instant favourite. And I can't wait to read the next book. I also read this for Tome Topple, for Read One Tome, and a genre I don't usually read. I don't usually read Grimdark Fantasy, so that's why I said it's not a genre I normally read. Because next I read Ray Bearer. Oh my god. If I thought I loved, like, everything else this month, this was amazing too. Five stars. Like, I don't know how I managed to pick up so many good books this month. Like, I feel like I'm in trouble for next month because how are any of the books on my TV are going to live up to all these amazing books. Raybo is about Tarasai. Tarasai is, is raised in isolation as her mother, known as the Lady, comes and goes as she pleases, and she can't touch anyone, so she really, you, in the first chapter, you really find that she, like, misses that family warmth and comfort and, like, like, touch, but when she comes of age, um, her mother, the Lady, sends her to the capital when she's 11, to become one of the prince's council of 11 and in this world when you become one of the 11th you like have a big deep bond with the prince and you all share like this bond it's like tighter than a family bond or a friend bond the lady gives teresai a magical wish to kill the prince when she falls in love and we go from there and what's on the back of the book i really thought going into it that it was going to be a totally different book and i'm so happy that the book changed as it went along so like the description is like the first hundred pages which i really love when that happens because you then get to like this really like oh what's gonna happen next like i really have no idea and i absolutely adore terasai and i love the 11 i love the whole magic behind it and this world is so beautiful like we start off with this like beautiful description of where she lives and the follow-up trees and the elephants she sees and like the fairies so if you want a african inspired fantasy that has fairies definitely pick this up because it involves like magical people that are like fairies and jinn which is really exciting i just can't believe how stunning this book is on the back Hotkey Books describes it as empires, wish, curse, and betrayal, which I could not agree with more. I thought this was going to be a standalone for some reason, but this definitely has a sequel and I could not wait when it comes out. And I believe this is a debut fantasy, so if this is what the debut is like, I can't wait for what's going to be like in the future. So 100% a 5 star read. And also a new favourite. I flew through this. I just absolutely adored all the relationships, the friendships, the family members, the love interests, and how it all intertwined twines and all really highlights the different relationships you have in life and how they impact you and how strong bonds really hold someone together. I definitely recommend this book. And I read Raybearer for Scallywagathon for the prompt Captain's Cabin. So that was the my first stop on the map. And the next book is a, another five star read. Like I said, 
I don't know if I'm just really generous this month or everything was as amazing as I feel it is, but I read The Beautiful by Renee Adia. I very much love Renee Adia's writing. I love the Wrath of the Dawn series. I love I loved Flame of the Mi Flame in the Mist. The only book I haven't gotten around to from her is Sun in the Smoke. When The Beautiful came out, a lot of people were pitching this as oh vampires are back, vampires in New Orleans, historical fantasy. Like it was very heavily implied like vampires, vampires, vampires. And then the reviews came out and everyone was like, There's no vampires. I don't like this book. And I could not disagree more with those reviews there is a hundred percent vampires in this book the first line starts off new orleans is a city ruled by the dead like <laughs> it's so inspired by new orleans like magic and culture so this is set in 1872 we start with our main character Celine as she arrives on the ship from france as she's running away from something and she's gonna start a new life and go to this convent and find a husband because in this time period that's pretty much all a young girl or woman can hope for is to find a good husband a gentleman that can raise her station and look after her celine is very much against like she's not opposed to love or having a husband but she's opposed to the fact that that's her only choice in life like she wants to be the director of her life she wants to rule her own choices when she meets the court of lions her path in life is definitely changed and this book is so interesting as it is a murder mystery throughout and I did not guess who the killer was, why they wanted to kill everyone. It was really a big surprise, which I really enjoyed. And you get perspective from Celine, the killer, and also our love interest, Bastion, which he is such a great character. Like, he, you think he's going to be, like, the general, like, moody bad boy, but he's so much more than that, and he definitely respects Celine and what she thinks, and he wants to know, what do you want? And I love that about him. And like I said, 100% there's vampires in this book. So if you enjoyed uh any of renee's other books you will love this because it definitely has her beautiful writing style i love how her stories flow yeah this honestly was just a beautiful book <laughs> so i highly recommend this book and i read it for books with chloe's patreon book of the month and i also read it for skelly wagathon for a bawdy song as this was centered around a romance which the romance was absolutely amazing this book if you like yearning and angst you will love this next i read such a fun age by kylie reed i picked this book up because it was the hotties book club pick of the month and also it was meant to be read for the group book for the reading rush which i didn't even know it was the group book for the reading rush which was such a shame because this book was amazing the first chapter is what the description says so amiria is a babysitter and she goes she gets called one night to babysit and take the little girl that she babysits often down to the shop and their security guard accuses her of kidnapping the child because she's black and the child is white and it goes on from there and it really explores how racism is in just every aspect of our world still today and how even if we think we're helping we might not be helping at all so i love how this explores uh Emira's perspective and how she feels about the situation and it also explores and it also explores alex her employer's perspective the child's mother and how she as a feminist blogger white woman thinks that she's helping and it goes on from there and I honestly when I was reading this I had like this sense of almost like dread when you read like a thriller like you know something bad's gonna happen because you always are worried for Amiria and I could not imagine how that how any person of color and black people like live their day-to-day -day life like that and so this was really good insight into the like small microaggressions along with uh, white voices and white allies talking over top of black voices and how they feel about situations involving racism and how they're treated and their rights. So I definitely highly recommend this book. This was a five star. I absolutely adored it. I cannot wait to read more books from Kylie Reid. And next I picked up one of my most anticipated books of this year. It was on my top 2020 books to read this year as its new release. 
and that was Emerald Blaze by Ilona Andrews. I absolutely adore Ilona Andrews' Paranormal Worlds. I just love the Hidden Legacy series. We start off first trilogy which is like Burn For Me and it's about Nevada and her story and, and Sapphire Flames is about Catalina and following that is Emerald Blaze. So this is the fifth book in the Hidden Legacy series and I just absolutely adore this urban fantasy. Like Catalina is such an amazing character as she is very young and she has to like take over the family business and have that stress and pressure of looking after her siblings and her cousins and she's the middle child which is a really interesting dynamic because usually we like read only from I feel like mostly we read from the oldest children or like the youngest children we never get like the middle child syndrome <laughs> which I really appreciate in this um I won't go too much in it because I don't want to spoil the book it's definitely I definitely recommend the series if you love urban fantasy how like magical powers uh feuding families that can like actually kill each other like really really good romances like these have some of the angstiest romances I've ever read which I absolutely love so yeah I highly recommend this book I can't say too much because like I said I don't want to spoil it but I rated it five stars which is great because I was really anticipating this book and now I can't wait for the next in the series and the last book I read this month was The Damned by Renee Ardia. I loved Beautiful slightly more only because The Beautiful had a much more structured plot and like the murder mystery kept it really flowing and going like at a steady pace where this like jumps straight back in from where the beautiful ended and we go from there and so I can't say too much but what I will say is you get a lot more perspectives in this book and you also find out a lot of interesting <laughs> information about Celine and the world like the world definitely expands in this book beyond New Orleans which I really appreciate and I thought this was going to be a duology but like from the ending I like do not see it <laughs> being a duology I definitely think there'll be a sequel I can't find anywhere confirming that there's going to be a third or four, even fourth book because this definitely reads as a second book in a series because we get this world expanded and then the book ends and I'm like wait I, I what what about that and that and like hang on <laughs> So I really enjoyed this and I think if you love the beautiful, like I said, I think you will love this book. So I rated this four stars. So those are all the books I read in August. 15 books in total and eight five star books, which is absolutely amazing. Like I can't believe how many new favourites I read this month and how many like new series I get to start now. And new authors that are on my radar so all around an absolutely amazing reading month i cannot wait to see if it continues into september i hope so because i got some really fun books i got some really fun books on my tbr thank you so much for watching let me know if you read any of these books and we can talk about it in the comments and or let me know what your favorite book was this month so i'll see you all later and i better get back to reading bye mm -hmm.